Welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video, we're going through our five favorite features in Adobe Illustrator. We've also created a free template download so you can try these features out alongside this video. So I'll pass over to Rory now who will take you through these features. Thanks Ross. So jumping straight into this template file, we have some design examples set up that we are going to use to demonstrate some of our favorite features. So starting on the left hand side, we have a very rough scanned in sketch here. And the first feature or tool I should say that we are going to look at is the pencil tool. This is maybe a slightly controversial one as the pen tool is probably one of the fundamental tools to learn and use in Illustrator as it can give us very precise results. However, I think the pencil tool often gets overlooked in favor of the pen tool for certain situations. So where I like to use it is with something like this that we have some flowing lines and I always make sure that I double click on the pencil tool itself and set the fidelity up to the maximum smoothness. More often than not, you can get some pretty good results with it. So I can start using this by simply clicking and dragging and creating a path just with where I move my mouse. And and this is the benefit of this tool I feel is that you can be much more freehand with it and use it a little bit more like you would an actual pencil or pen. Now that doesn't mean it's as easy as just drawing on a bit of paper as in most cases you're going to be using a mouse. Using a graphics tablet will also greatly help with this process but the beauty of this is that we can be very freehand and with the smoothing turned up it generally does a pretty good job. So we would still definitely recommend using the pen tool for more precise precise work. However, an example like this should work pretty well. Now the other thing as well is I don't have to click and drag throughout this whole path that I want to create. I can let go and go back to where I left off, wait for my cursor to change to show that small line next to it and then continue on. So I'm just doing this very slowly to try and be as precise as I can with this mouse and I've gone off slightly the tracing line there. But what I can do now is I'll bump the stroke weight up a touch more and and I'm going to turn off our sketch layer and this is what we're left with. Now you can see that this is by no means perfect but in general it's done a pretty good job especially with the earlier sections of this H and what we can do is select the path again I'll grab my pencil tool and if I hold option or alt on a PC our cursor will change and this is essentially enabling the smooth tool which I know is technically a different tool but we're still using the pencil tool in this case and what we can do is click and drag over areas to try and smooth them out to get a better result as you can see here. So I'm just going to leave this as is for now but we will come back to that later on. Now moving on our next feature which again is a tool is the shape builder tool. So to show you how it works if you're not familiar we have a series of circles here so there's nothing particularly special going on. We've just arranged them in a way that we are going to use the shape builder to create a design from. So it can be found over on the left hand side the keyboard shortcut is shift M. Hovering over any intersecting paths here you can see the shapes within them are highlighting so what we can do is essentially merge together sections of overlapping paths or we can equally remove them as well so this is very useful what I can also do is set a color first so I'm just going to select from these colors down at the bottom here I'm going to remove the stroke and now if I click and drag over some of these intersecting areas we've now created a single shape from them and this color is being applied so I'm going to just continue this going round this shape and last but not least I will just fill in this shape within here now what we can do is holding option or alt on a PC I can click in any of the areas that I want to remove or delete so this is also very easy to do everything on the outside here I can just click and drag through I don't have to be particularly precise in this scenario and this is just a quick and easy way of creating more advanced objects in the software I'm just going to remove the stroke from these and we're left with this interesting looking design simply from a series of circles. Moving on our next feature is outlined text. Now this is another fundamental aspect of using Adobe Illustrator if you want to create customized type. 
So we have some live text here and we're using the font Barlow Condensed. So we can convert this into outlined vectors by right clicking and we have an option here that says Create Outlines. I could equally have done this by going up to Type and we have a Create Outlines option that's greyed out because we've already converted it and the keyboard shortcut is Shift Command O. And basically what we can do from here is manipulate this as we would any other vector. So I'm going to grab my Direct Selection tool, I'll extend the top of this letter T for example, you can select the rest of it and this is where we can get really quite creative with what we do with text in the software. I could equally grab a rectangle and add sections to the text as well and I'll create a duplicate over on the other side as well and I'm just going to extend the bottom of this letter P down to match these other elements too and you can see with just a few minor manipulations we've created something much more unique here. I could also just round off these corners to match the rest of the text. I'm going to select all of this and I'm just going to make sure it's all united and grouped with my Pathfinder and I could always apply a custom colour as well. So very easy to outline and manipulate text. Moving on, our fourth feature is the Blend tool, or I should say the Blend feature because it's more than just a tool really. So up at the top here we have a simple polygon and a square. If I select both of them I can go up to Object, Blend and Make and you can see we are essentially getting a gradient created and that's because of the settings that are applied to a blend by default. We have a blend tool over on the left hand side which is W on the keyboard. If I double click on this we'll get our blend options and as you can see this is set to smooth colour. If I check preview I can drop this down and we could select specified steps instead and I'll change this value to 3 in this example and if I click OK you can get a better idea of what it's doing. So it's not only changing the colour but it's also changing things like the shape and the positioning of the anchor points to blend from one object to another so it's taking all of the parameters into consideration. What we could do is select this blend, go up to object and expand, click OK and we could actually use each of these colors in a color palette. We've got another example here, we don't have to just do this between two objects, we can essentially do it with as many objects as we want. So we've just got some simple paths here. I'm going to grab my blend tool itself and this is another way of applying it. I can click on an object then click on on another object and you can see this is creating a blend between these two and then I can continue on to a third object in this example and we're getting quite an interesting effect. Again I can select this, double click on my blend tool and I can change any of these parameters. We also have things like specified distance here so if I click preview we can get something much more tightly packed in this example but I'll click OK for now. One more really cool use of the blend tool so we have two circles with some gradients applied here. Again Again, I'm just going to grab the blend tool and click on one and then the other. I'll double click on the blend tool itself, click preview and this time I'm going to go to specified steps and I'm going to enter quite a high value. So I'll go with 200 for this example, click OK. So that's creating quite a smooth blend from one circle to another. Now with this selected I'm now going to go over to our original path that we created with the pencil tool and another really cool feature is that we can actually apply a blend to another path. So I can do that by going up to Object, Blend and Replace Spine and you can see we're starting to see each iteration which doesn't look great but I can always just double click on my Blend tool and we can adjust this value here. So I could up this to about 800. If I click Preview we're going to get a much smoother look here and we can create some really quite interesting looking paths as a result. One last use of the Blend tool is to add a bit of depth to your vectors. Now we did a video on adding depth with different techniques in Illustrator but I'm just going to make a copy of this type so command C. Now I'm going to make another duplicate although this time I'm going to hold option or alt on a PC and click and drag and I'm just going to hold shift to lock this to a 45 degree angle. I'm just going to take this down slightly to about here. Now I'm going to select both of these, go up to object, blend and make. I'll double click on my blend tool and again I want to add a good few steps here to make this look seamless. I'm going to enter 200 and click OK and the last thing 
thing I'm actually going to do is just change the fill to something darker. So we'll go with a darker orange here. And now I'm going to paste our original text back in place with Command F. And we can add even more interest to this custom type. So last but not least, our final favorite feature, and these were very difficult to pick because there are so many great features in Illustrator, is Asset Export. So if you haven't used this, this is a very easy way of exporting your designs in the software. For example, I'm going to make sure each of these designs is grouped, so they have to be grouped in order to export as a single image. So I'm just clicking and dragging and pressing Command G or Control G. I'll grab my type as well, and I'll just grab these blended paths also. Now I can grab all of them, so I'm just going to click and drag over all four, open up my asset export, which I have set up on the right hand side. If you don't, you can go up to Window and Asset Export, and all I need to do is click and drag these four grouped designs into here. You can see they are now displaying as small thumbnails. I'm able to rename this to whatever I want, but down here we can essentially define different file types to export to. So at the moment this is set to PNG and it's set to a width of 1920 pixels. If I drop this down though you can see we have some different options. So we can export them at the size they are created at. We have two times, three times, four times as well, or we can set a custom width, height or resolution. So I'm just going to leave this as one times. You'll also see we have the file format as well. So we can choose from PNGs, JPEGs, SVG and PDF, and we can actually add multiple options. I could tell the software to export a version at one times the size as a PNG, as well as two times the size in a PNG as well, or I could change the format depending on your requirements. So this is very easy to use. And essentially, once you're ready to export them, all you need to do is select them within this asset export panel and click export and choose your location. But that's it for our top five features in Adobe Illustrator. So there you have it. These are our favorite features in Illustrator. There are so many more great aspects of the software though. Let us know what your favorite tools are in the comments down below. And if you want to learn more about graphic design, we've created a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers, which saves you the hassle of having to figure them all out for yourself. We'll be showing you how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, creative thinking and how to spark creativity, what good composition is and how to achieve it in your designs, how to pick the right colors for your designs and how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you are serious about leveling up your design skills, then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you for. And ours is free. The link is in the description. You're not gonna to want to miss it. I'll see you there.